You know, I have these teleprompter people. They're great. They're genius. And I was about 45 minutes into the speech, and I realized I was only on line two. And he was like, what do I do? But we have more fun. Hey, you now have a president that doesn't have to use a teleprompter. Isn't that nice? There you go. Bottom of my friends, how are you? It is a Tuesday. We go to one and only Trent Kelly live on uh, supertalk.fm forward slash watch. If he is there, would you turn him on, sir? Do 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 do. And there he goes. Good morning, Good morning Congressman. How are you, sir? I'm I like the paraphernalia. I like. I love the paraphernalia in the background. It's it's colorful. We, Can you hear me? We've got the American flag, and then we've got uh, my 155th, the unit I went to, to combat with a couple of times, and uh, several other things back there, Paul. So let me let me ask you first of all. Let's get this out of the way. What do you think about what? What are your thoughts on the the debate tonight? We are about twelve hours away. What do you think is going to happen? Well, I think, uh, I, first of all, I think they won't be hard on Joe Biden. They won't ask hard questions. They won't ask him and make him say, who would your Supreme Court nominee be? Because they don't want the answer to that. Uh, but other than that, I think they'll both do well. Listen, Joe Biden's been up here almost uh, five decades. So it's not like he's a stranger to a debate stage. President Trump will do well, as always, in the debate. Uh, the question yeah. is, is will the moderator... Uh, Make it even, or will he uh, throw Joe, Joe Biden softballs? I don't think he will. I, I think Chris Wallace will do a good job on that one. I don't think he'll be easy on either one of them, especially on uh, uh, as far as the questions are, are concerned. So we know exactly what areas he's he's going to with with the categories are going to be. So I, I think he'll he'll be probably fair to both of those people. I mean, he's got to he's got to worry about his Fox audience there. Uh, the staple of that. So uh, I think it's going to be fair on that part. But I, th- I think the, the vulnerabilities for the president, he's got he's to not be too harsh on the guy because he seemed, you know, most people understand his medical. And then there's the the all the extras that go with this because people are talking about a million people have already voted, so they're going to be forget about them. They can't go back and vote again, or at least they're not supposed to. Which reminds me, we have a situation where one of your cohorts, Ilhan, uh, has apparently bought votes or allegedly bought votes. I mean, this Veritas film out there is just absolutely incredible. It is my understanding. Five years in prison is is the is the law. Five years in prison uh, and a ten thousand dollar fine if you do this. But the voter fraud. The, have you have you watched that film? I all? have not. And, I, and and I'll tell you, I'm I'm really uh, as a former district attorney. You know the facts will bear out. And if she's guilty of doing other things, I hope they put her in prison and put her in prison for a long time. If she didn't. Uh, the facts are being borne out. But I, as a former district attorney, I usually, until I get all the facts, Paul, I, re- I yeah. usually don't comment on those kind of things. Well, I, under- I understand that. But here's a little bit, and, and I've cleaned this up as much as possible. But for people who didn't hear this and haven't seen the film from uh, from the new Veritas uh, uh, a film that's been released, here it is. State Representative Hudson Hallam hired a group. Nope, that's not it. Here it goes. Project Veritas has received an explosive piece of tape. The tape you're about to see shows a man buying a registration form for an absentee ballot from a voter, giving him, quote, pocket money, unquote, of $200 and expecting to collect his ballot when the voter receives it. But that's illegal, why? You don't get illegal. I have to see. She's the one who came up with all this. So she did it. She yeah. started this whole thing with yeah. the, the pay to vote. Yeah. So the people that work for Ilhan are actually counting the ballots, counting the vote. And they become managing the prison, too. They walk with you to the booth, and then they vote, oh, vote this guy, vote this guy, vote this guy. Vote even if you speak English. Yeah, whether you speak English or not, they uh, they are walking with you in the booths. There's a booth. There's so many things that are violations here. 
the, it, it obviously is. Listen, and we, I, I, all, all I want is for every person who is eligible to vote to be able to vote and for that vote to be cast and counted as it was intended to be. And uh, it's funny, the party that always says they want a fair election always uh, seems to find ways to skirt the election law. The Supreme Court justice uh, is on full attack now, and it seems that the leader of the Democrats in the in the House, Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker is kind of changing her tactics a little bit, and I've noticed that in the last few days. They've tried just about everything they could. Now it's going to be on the Affordable Care Act, and if this happens and the Supreme Court justice goes in and the president wins, then everybody's going to die. Basically, that's it. Everything, all health care is going to go away. And I don't know how many times the president has mentioned and emphasized that existing conditions will be covered. And she gets up there and says existing conditions will go away. The president said that. And it's a ball-faced lie. I I was with Dr. Fleming, his deputy chief of staff, last week. Uh, The president was very clear. Uh, The Republican conference up here, I can tell you, there will be no health care plan in America that Republican support that does not cover pre-existing conditions. And I don't know how much yeah. clearer we can say that. The bottom line is, though, all they're worried about is politics <clears throat> and, and misstating facts. But pre-existing yeah. conditions are part of every Republican plan I know. Congressman Kelly, i got to tell you, this is before you were in there, but back during the Paul Ryan days and even the John Boehner days, we screwed up, and I say we, the Republicans uh, who are representing the conservatives in this country, screwed up because there was plenty of time to come up with an, a, a different plan uh, in in respects to uh, at, attacking the the malfeasance of uh, Obamacare from the mandate to everything else, and they never did. They absolutely never did. We always heard this, and then we heard people say, "Well, there are several different plans you're talking about." Nobody ever came up with Health Care America plan and began to brand it. And I'm hoping now, if the president goes back in. And the Republicans are able to maybe uh, be, be, get control of the House, that that would be done. Put together a plan and pass it. Absolutely. Well, you know, we passed one through the House then, and uh, that's the famous uh, thumbs down by Senator yep. McCain that killed that, which covered all those things. It covered pre existing conditions. But hopefully, we'll get an opportunity. But at the end of the day, I can tell you what's not the answer. It's not health care, free health care for all, because what that means uh, in net effect, like in Cuba and Russia and everywhere else, means health care for no one. So I am not so how, for Medicare health care for all that uh, is free because nothing's free, Paul. No, it, it's not. And there's some things that the president wants to do and has done by executive order, like the uh, prescription prices uh, and a lot of other things. And I think and, and also the the uh, transparency. Uh, and doing as much as he can without the help of Congress, both the House and the Senate. But uh, I'm, I'm hopeful that's going to change. Apparently, the Speaker is beginning to lose it a little bit. She was biting down on her dentures in this one. Impeachment inquiry. Is there another term we should be using? I'm not, I... <laughs> Thank you all very much. Let me see. We are on our path. Where it takes us is where the we will follow the fact. <laughs> she, she drops the f bomb. And I'm not sure, I mean, she's got enough Catholic priests that will take her to confession, but she drops the F-bomb in this when they ask her about the impeachment process, and, and, and she wasn't happy about they're it. They're coming after your children. Protect your children from what they're trying to do in this court. Well, I, I hate to hear that. Two years has been, is going to kill millions and trillions of America. Uh, there's not enough population left if everything they said was going to kill people had killed the people they said. It's just, it, it, it is absolutely politics at its worst. Well, you wonder sometimes who is stupid enough to believe some of the stuff when it goes contrary to facts. But then again, you look at some of the people on, on social media who are just uh, raving mad and uh, you got to believe it, but uh, she, she, she charges you're coming after the kids. They're coming after your children. Yeah. Protect your children from what they're trying to do in this court. Here's a woman that is on the front line of the abortion process in this country. Has the audacity to say that the Supreme Court is going to come after your children. 
Uh, That is all she does. You know, but she's got a lot of trouble in her conference right now. Uh, Several of their members want to bring back up. There's unexpended money in the Pay Tech Protection Program to help our small businesses to give some of those. There's a discharge petition. $130 billion is already spent that is waiting to be spent, and she won't put it on the floor to help our small businesses because she's selfish.